Welcome to this video on the First Punic War, and by moving into this segment of history, we're looking more at the Roman conquest of the Mediterranean. Before this video really starts, I wanted to talk a little bit about an article available on MakeTheBrainHappy.com. It goes over ancient Rome's geography and shows you a timeline of maps, starting from Rome as a city state to how it expanded over Italy, now into this section on the conquest of the Mediterranean, and then obviously beyond. I will make sure to link to the article in the description below so that you can see all of these time periods if you're interested. As Rome expanded across the Mediterranean, it came in contact with larger powers. And the most preeminent among those civilizations was by no doubt Carthage. It was essentially a two-man race for who was going to control the Mediterranean. And as you can see on the map here, a lot of the battles were located around Sicily and focused on this area. In particular, the Romans did not want Carthage to encroach upon Sicily because they felt that that was a aggressive stance that was a threat to their own national security. Now, the origins of the war are believed to have occurred due to Messana. There were these people called the Marmertines. I'll spell that, Marmertines. And they were originally mercenaries who were hired by the king of Syracuse as he fought his wars. Once he dismissed them from his service, instead of going back to their original homeland, they instead migrated to Messana and forcefully took over the town's operations. Now, the king of Syracuse wasn't very happy about that, and so he invaded or besieged the city of Messana with the help of Carthage, who sent soldiers and men over to support the siege. Since this is so close to the Italian mainland, the Romans thereby, and it's not clear historically whether they engineered the Messanian or the Marmertinian call for aid, or whether the call for aid was genuine. But the story goes that the Marmertines asked Rome for help against Carthage and Syracuse. And this is how the First Punic War began. It lasted from 264 to 241 BCE. In this summary, we're going to talk about five major battles and their important critical aspects, their significance. The first one that we're going to talk about is the Battle of Mylae, which took place in 260 BCE. This was the Romans' first naval victory. Their commander was Gaius Dullius, and their victory was so significant that they erected a column in the forum to honor their commander. Now, why was this victory so significant? Well, the Carthaginians were descended from the Phoenicians, also known as the Canaanites, who lived on the right side, on the eastern side of the Mediterranean, where people would consider modern-day Israel to be. These, Carthage was originally a colony of a Phoenician city, but after that city fell to Alexander the Great, Carthage became an independent, originally city-state, and then later empire. The Phoenicians had a long and storied history with ships and sailing. They were some of the most successful traders in the Mediterranean. They built the best ships. They had the best wood, famous cedar wood, 
and they had the best sailors and sailing culture. So for Rome to defeat Carthage in a naval battle when Carthage had all of this legacy and history behind it was quite significant and boosted Roman morale within this conflict. The second battle that we're going to talk about is the one at Cape Economus. The Romans Manlius Volso and Attilius Regulus defeated Carthage. It took place in 256 BCE. Remember the name Regulus. He's going to show up in the next battle, which is the Battle of the Bagradus Valley. Essentially, due to the earlier victories, the Romans began to feel pretty confident, and they sent a mainland army here at Apsis in modern-day Tunisia. They were essentially going to threaten Carthage on land, where the Carthaginians, in a sense, had the disadvantage. The Romans were known, were famous for their legions and for their tactics within land battles. And at the Battle of Ides Regulus, who was the commander of these forces, is victorious against the Carthaginians, which is quite makes the Carthaginians quite desperate because he was very close to their city. And if Carthage fell, then their civilization, their empire would be ruined. But in 255 BCE, at the battle, and as I said, the Gratis Valley, Regulus is defeated by the Spartan mercenary Xanthippus. X-A-N-T-H-I-P-P-U-S, who had been hired to lead the Carthaginian forces. Regulus is captured along with 500 other men. He is sent back to Rome, across the Mediterranean, to convince the Romans to surrender to Carthage. Regulus tells the Romans, no, keep fighting. You've got the Carthaginians on the ropes. Regulus, due to Roman honor, is sent back to Carthage, where he is killed, executed. This becomes a parable in Roman culture for what it means to be honorable and truthful. The next battle that we'll talk about is the Battle of Drapana, which took place in 249 BCE. The story goes that the general, Publius Claudius Pulcher, threw sacred chickens into the water because they were not eating, which was, according to the religious signs and the guise, was a bad omen. And thereafter, he was defeated in battle by the Carthaginian Adherbal. And the fifth and final battle that we'll talk about, the Battle of Aetius Y, if you include that, then that's six, but that battle wasn't in and of itself so significant to the course of the war. The Battle of the Agates Island was the final conflict, the final battle that ended the First Punic War. It took place in 241 BCE. The Romans, led by Lutatius Catullus, defeated Hanno the Great, and thereafter the First Punic War was ended. But this was certainly not the end of the story. The First Punic War lasted an entire generation and generated an incredible amount of hostility and animosity between Rome and Carthage. As you probably know, there's a Second Punic War and a Third Punic War. And there's conflicts between those Punic Wars, quite significant ones in fact, that predicate those wars. And it only all ends in 149 BCE. It takes nearly 120 years for the conflict 
to resolve itself. And we'll be discussing all of those Punic Wars, what occurs between them in later videos. Thank you for listening.